From Aleister Crowley to Bob Dylan, here are your top 10 real people in history who made a deal with the devil. Probably. <laughs> I'm Melissa Malati, your host, and let's jump right into this. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have Jack Parsons. Known for being an American engineer, Jack Parsons was alive from 1914 to 1952. He grew up reading sci-fi stories about rocket ships and people going out into space. Apparently, when he was 13 years old, he planned to sell his soul to the devil in exchange for a real live rocket ship. Of course, it didn't work out, but he didn't let it discourage him, and as he grew older, he tried to create a rocket engine powerful enough to travel to outer space. Apparently, in his 20s, he began to follow occult leader Aleister Crowley, and he attempted at doing a spell himself called the Babylon Working. This spell was supposed to help him summon a goddess by the name of Babylon that would help men go to the moon someday. Jack ended up inventing jet fuel that is used by NASA even today, so arguably his spell worked. Or perhaps the devil helped him out and he actually sold his soul without knowing it. I guess we'll never know. In our number 9 spot, we have Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson was a very known guitarist of his time. Robert was alive from 1911 to 1938. Not a very long life, and it's probably because the devil said to him, Come home, my child. Or so I imagine. Word on the street is that he apparently grew up quite poor and wanted a prosperous life. And so he went to the crossroads of a major highway and made a deal with the devil himself. He wrote a song called Me and the Devil Blues, where he talks about walking alongside with the devil. So honestly, that's all the proof I need. He died at only 27 years old, and his music became quite popular after his passing. He apparently was forgiven for his sins after he passed, and was then allowed to be buried in the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Mississippi. In our number 8 spot, we have Bob Dylan. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Bob Dylan, Melissa, the musical icon, do you really think he sold his soul to the devil? Look, I'm just here to present the evidence. You can decide, you can speculate. There is some evidence that points to this being a possibility, and even I'm quite shook. You may or may not know of the song he wrote called Crossroads, where he tells the story of him being at a crossroads with his soul. In the song, he talks about falling to his knees and pleading to the Lord to save his soul. But then he also says, and I'm standing at the crossroads, believe I'm sinking down. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Sinking down into the fiery pits of hell, perhaps? <laughs> Some speculate that this crossroads that he is referring to is the same crossroads where Robert Johnson supposedly offered his soul to the devil. Apparently in an interview once while talking about the song, Bob is quoted as saying, I made a bargain with it a long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. Whatever it is, we never found out, but since he sunk down, I'm going to say that it was probably with Lucifer himself. In our number seven spot, we have Niccolo Paganini. I really tried with the accent. Born in Italy in 1782, Niccolo was known for being a professional violinist. By the age of 12, he was already touring and doing shows. And by 15, he went on a world tour. Apparently his mom was such a hardcore stage mom that people of the time believed that she summoned Satan to make sure her son sold out concerts. <laughs> Love this. Even in the 1700s, momagers existed. People also believed that he himself was walking with the devil. Probably a bad rumor because he was so talented and jealousy probably took over his competitors at the time. But maybe there was some basis for this as he was said to have abnormally long fingers that moved so quickly and his skin was very rubbery like. There are medical explanations for this today, but perhaps people of the time thought that they were witnessing a magical being of some sort, and that's why they attributed it to the devil. Apparently on his deathbed, he freaked out when a Catholic priest came to pray for him, and he said that he would be saved and for the priest to leave. Spoiler alert, he was not saved, but this last act was all people needed to hear to confirm their speculations. 
In our number six spot, we have Jimmy Page. Yep, another one that I find surprising, but honestly, I'm more of a pop hip hop listener, so it's not surprising that I'm a little ignorant to the goings on within a hardcore rock band, so yeah. Jimmy Page was the guitarist for the band Led Zeppelin. Apparently, he was very interested in occult teachings, and specifically by the famous occultist Aleister Crowley. He was such a huge fan that he ended up buying Aleister's home in Scotland. He would relay stories about scary sounds he would hear in the house and of how people had died there. This of course led people to think that he was probably involved in some kind of dark magic like a lot of musicians, and quite possibly sold his soul to the devil. Because of his reputation, people began to believe the other band members were Satanists as well. Apparently people believe that if you play Stairway to Heaven backward, you hear demon-like voices. Holy crap, that's terrifying. Can someone do it and maybe report back to me? Okay, thanks. In our number five spot, we have Antoine Rose, the iconic witch that led to the world understanding that where there is a witch, there is a magical broomstick. Antoine's story is a tragic one. In today's society, she would be known as a poor single mother that turned to illicit substances. But in the year 1477, the world was much different. Apparently, Antoine was convinced that another witch tried to kidnap her son, but her and her son stabbed the witch in the arm to stop her. Witnesses of the time swore that she spoke to the devil, asking him for help, most likely in a trance-like state from an illicit illicit substance, but again, this was a different time. These witnesses watched her slather on an ointment on a broomstick and placed it in between her legs. Apparently the ointment was a psychedelic herb that can only be absorbed through the skin, so it makes sense as to why she maybe did it this way. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, she was accused of being a witch and she eventually confessed to working with the devil. But when you think about it, she probably did think that she had been working with the devil because perhaps she had a weird trip where she believed she spoke to a spirit and if she didn't have anyone to say, hey gal, that's totally normal when you have a crazy trip, like the thousands of people online seem to say, then she probs did think she was crazy and that she had talked to the devil. In our number four spot, we have Giles Duray. You may recognize this famous French name as he was a knight that fought alongside Joan of Arc. He was very close friends with Joan and took it very hard when she was kidnapped and burned at the stake. Apparently after her death, he turned to alchemy and became fascinated with the idea of eternal life. Over the years, he had grown to be one of the richest people in France, and it was said that the Catholic Church was wanting money from him. Ignoring this request, he actually decided to put on a play, but this wasn't just any play, it was a major production with paid actors and set builders alike. It has been said that the church was furious about this, and so they marketed him to the public as a serial killer and convinced them that he worshipped Satan because he practiced alchemy. He was sentenced to death and afterwards, all of his assets were seized by none other than the Catholic Church. Wow. Look, there's good and bad people in every place of the world and there's good and bad people that practice every religion. But it just hurts my soul when I hear stories like this because I'm sure there are tons of good Catholics of the world and this kind of story paints them all as bad. So why do the bad guys always ruin it for everyone else? In our number three spot today, we have Giuseppe Tartini. Excuse me as I butcher these Italian names. <laughs> Give me a pass, I'm British, just love me. Giuseppe Tartini is known for being a famous Italian composer and violinist. He was more specifically known for being able to play a song that is so complicated, many people today can't even play it. The song is called The Devil's Trill Sonata, and it is a song that he composed after he was apparently woken up by the devil himself. The devil was sitting on the edge of his bed and playing his violin. Apparently after that night, he could magically play trills that are almost impossible for people to play. So naturally, everyone assumed that he made a deal with the devil. I believe it. In our number two spot, we have the Salem Witches. 
Okay, so if you don't know about the Salem Witch Trials, you should definitely do some Googling tonight after this because this is some juicy history. In the late 1600s, there were many women who were said to be friendly with the devil in Salem, Massachusetts. The people of the town drank some kind of marketing Kool-Aid and were convinced that certain citizens had powers and did rituals in the woods. A total of 25 people lost their lives during these trials, and of course, these accusations were never proven, and many years later, it was discovered that it really was a lie that spread like wildfire. A super sad story and a pretty crazy part of American history. In our number one spot, we have Aleister Crowley himself. Known for referring to himself as the Beast or the Antichrist, Aleister Crowley is a very famous occult leader and magician. He is also known for having occult gatherings where people were encouraged to explore each other naked while they would do rituals. He was kicked out of Italy in 1923 for word of these gatherings had gotten around. He was once quoted as saying that God and Satan fought over his soul. And I guess we can assume that Satan won because he would highly encourage people to focus on selfish acts which were considered satanic at the time. Or perhaps still is depending on who you ask and what religion you were brought up with. Crowley was known for saying, do what thou wilt. <laughs> which basically means do whatever you want in life. That is exactly what is promoted in society today, so perhaps maybe he was just a forward thinker of the time. But his own mother would call him Satan, so I'm gonna bet that he probs did sell his soul to the devil. Anyways, that's enough devil talk. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Melissa Malati, your host, and I hope you have a fabulous day. Good day. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I've had too much coffee today. In our number three spot, we have G um, uh, Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Giuseppe Tartini. <laughs> There were many women who were said to be friendly with the devil in Salem, Massachusetts. I can never say, Ma is it Massachusetts? Massachusetts?